Hello, my name is Zana Williams and I am the Integrated Reservoir Modelling Manager at Shell QGC. I'm a geologist who runs a team of geologists and reservoir engineers and we're responsible for building three-dimensional reservoir models. Consider it a little bit like a Minecraft model, so we take all of the data, information, interpretation, and we try and build a three-dimensional view of the geology and the rocks underneath the ground. Every day is different. We're always learning something new. We're always acquiring new data that really makes us challenge the interpretations and the assumptions that we've made about what's going on in the subsurface. Rocks are absolutely the storytellers for the Earth. Think of them as like old storybooks that basically we can read to tell us about the four and a half billion years of history that the Earth has. There are three main rock types, igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. Igneous rocks form when molten magma moves from the upper mantle or the lower crust to either just below the Earth's surface where we form intrusive igneous rocks or extrusive volcanic rocks which are formed at the Earth's surface where the liquid magma is ejected from the Earth's surface at volcanoes. Sedimentary rocks are the rocks that are formed on the Earth's surface and they form as a result of physical processes that happen all around our Earth, either through the erosion and weathering of existing rocks or through chemical processes that happen in the ocean. The last rock group, which are metamorphic rocks, can actually be formed of any type of rock and essentially are igneous, sedimentary or metamorphic rocks that are buried deep into the Earth's surface and are exposed to pressure and time and eventually are uplifted back to the Earth's surface as these very unusual metamorphic rocks. So now we're going to have a look at three different types of sedimentary rock. And if I have a look at this one, I can see that I've got some pretty big grains in here. And this tells me an awful lot about this rock. It tells me that it must have been deposited in a high energy environment. Because the only way that you can transport large particles is if you've got enough energy in the system to move those particles through. This will most likely have been deposited in a flood event where you've got lots of high energy water bringing lots of big material into an area. And this rock is called a conglomerate. Now, if we move on to our second rock, I can see that some of the grains are quite a bit smaller than what we had in the last rock, but I can still see individual grains. Again, this rock will have been deposited in a moderate energy environment and most likely deposited in a river system. So this would have been a fluvial sandstone. If we now move on to our last rock, I'm finding it really hard to actually see any individual grains. The fact that you can't see any individual grains suggests that it must have been deposited in a low energy environment where only the very smallest particles are able to be transported. So this would have been a marine mudstone deposited in a relatively deep marine or even a deep lake setting. In geology, essentially, the present is the key to the past. So we need to understand what Earth system processes are happening in different parts of the world today to then understand where different types of rocks are going to be formed. And now we're going to have a look at three different locations where rocks are actually forming today. So our first location is just off the coast of Queensland, and it's the Great Barrier Reef. And this is an amazing example of where a carbonate sedimentary rock is currently forming and has been and will continue to form for about a million years. Our next location, if we zoom over to the Big Island in Hawaii, is an example of where igneous rocks are forming today. And literally, the magma is being exposed to surface and cooling within a few hours and the rock is formed straight away. Our last location is if we zoom over to the Himalayan mountains where we have metamorphic rocks forming and these will have been formed over many millions of years. Growing up, I was always really interested in the natural world, always fascinated by mountains and rivers. And at high school, I studied geography and particularly physical geography. And in doing that, I really started to understand the role that the geology and the rocks play in the natural landscapes that we have in our natural environment. By studying the field of geology, I've had a whole world of options available to myself. So I've been able to work on some fantastic projects, share my love of geology with the broader community. I've been able to see the world through both studying and traveling and working and living abroad and met some fantastic people. 
and I've made some real scientific discoveries that I've been able to share with the broader scientific community and proving that the UK's first meteorite impact crater exists. So if anybody's interested in progressing a career in geology, my advice would be to make sure that you study a range of science topics. Physical geography is always useful and so is maths. If you study any of those subjects, that will set you up really well to going on and doing a, a degree in geology. So the main thing about a career in STEM essentially is that you're always asking questions about why, what's going on, what if, and really it's all about being curious, being interested and asking lots of questions.